Welcome digital marketers to our digital marketers graduation party. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack Academy, and I'm very excited to welcome our 17th graduating class of the Digital Marketers Edge program. Woohoo! Congratulations, guys. We're going to have an amazing uh, presentation today. We're going to have uh, real life campaigns from uh, a number of our amazing participants um, and a lot of uh, really fun surprises and thank you gifts. So welcome everybody. Uh, and uh, my name, as I said, is Dan Gretsch. I am a business storyteller. After many, many years working as a journalist and uh, storyteller for journalism organizations, uh, I made a transition into digital marketing and was really challenged in learning this stuff. And I never forgot how difficult that learning journey was for me. And so when I had an opportunity to start my own business after mastering digital marketing, uh, I wanted to make that learning journey easier for mid-career professionals and business owners like you. Uh, since we started BizHack, uh, we have been uh, acknowledged by a number of accelerator programs, uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, Entrepreneurs Organization, a Knight Foundation funded one. We've also been recognized with awards from the AMA and the Miami Herald as a top startup. And we've partnered with some of the top educational institutions in South Florida, uh, Broward College, FIU, Miami-Dade College, and a number of community organizations that particularly serve small businesses and minority and women-owned businesses. And we're very proud of those affiliations. The reason that I do this is in many ways, I'm really continuing the legacy of my mom, uh, who was an inner city school teacher in Philadelphia, which is to uh, take those folks who are the underdogs, the small businesses, the minorities, the women owned businesses, and give them access to the best information so that they can transform their lives. And I think what you're gonna see today is a set of transformative stories. And that is our mission. And that is why we do what we do. And it's been true of me from when I was a young kid going uh, to my mom's classes, to a journalist, uh, as you can see, when I was a younger man covering the school district, and now today as a business owner and as an educator. I wanted to introduce Cohort 17 of the Digital Marketers Edge program, also known as the Digital Titans. One of the things that we do is we invite each group to name themselves. Uh, they name themselves the Digital Titans. And as you're going to see, this was a mighty group. I wanted to acknowledge our amazing lead instructor, uh, Alex de Carvalho. Thank you so much, Alex, for all that you have done uh, and all, uh, all the support you have given to me and to BizHack and to the more than 100 participants that you have uh, taught over the past year. Um, I wanted to announce that um, sadly, Alex has decided that he's going to focus now on building out his consulting practice. Uh, he does executive coaching and consulting to businesses. Um, and he uh, specifically focuses that practice on digital marketing strategy and growth. Um, and I wanted to invite Alex to say a few words. He's not going to be able to stay with us for the whole presentation, but um, I wanted to personally uh, thank you, Alex, for all the amazing work that you've done uh, educating, um, you know, nearly 150 businesses and really helping further our mission of transforming their lives. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan. This has been uh, an amazing experience. You know, we started, uh, it was uh, in person. Uh, classes and then COVID hit and we had to quickly <laughs> adapt and get on Zoom and uh, we then changed the whole format of, of, the, of the course uh, to get on Zoom. And uh, and it's been uh, an incredible, uh, you know, I think uh, we've gone through six or seven cohorts like this on uh, teaching through Zoom. It's been an amazing learning uh, experience uh, for me as well and for everyone. Uh, Dan, uh, thanks for putting all of this uh, together and, and also it's been a it's been an amazing uh, pleasure working with all the coaches and all the, uh, you know, instructors and um, also Lilia and, and Marianne now. And, uh, you know, I wish you the best of luck. I've, I've started a, uh, a new startup focused on Clubhouse. Uh, I haven't been this excited professionally in, in three, or, three or four or five years. Uh, Clubhouse is going so quickly. It's the most amazing new media I've seen since Twitter, which was, you know, like 12 years ago. And, uh, you know, Clubhouse is going to change the world. So excited to be a part of that. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, Clubhouse is definitely something that we're going to talk a lot about. We actually have next week at this time a presentation specifically focused on how small businesses can think about and use Clubhouse. Um, I know that Amy Williams, who is in our cohort, uh, has been very, very active in Clubhouse and inviting many of us to participate. Uh, I'm kind of lurking on Clubhouse as I sort of calculate it's a natural uh, platform for me as a former radio broadcaster. Alex, is there anything more you can share uh, about your startup? I would love to hear more. Yeah, so I just, you know, I wanted to acknowledge this uh, this past cohort also who's, who's online right now. You know, thank you for making this uh, such a great experience. Uh, you know, it was, uh, you guys were so, so active and I'm so impressed by what you've done and by your ads and by your progress and by your learning. Uh, it was uh, really, truly uh, amazing. So thank you so much. Um, really, really glad to collaborate uh, with you all. And uh, yeah, so uh, Clubhouse, you know, this is a new medium. Uh, it's all audio. And this really takes um, the best of social media because on social media, you can have a lot of like not so good things. But once everybody is on audio or on video, like on Zoom, then uh, you really start to get the best of social media. And right now, Clubhouse is like one of the best spaces you can be on. The people who are on there are just amazing. The rooms that are on there are just amazing. I've learned so much myself. There's so much educational content going on in Clubhouse. And I've got a, um, I've got a project uh, that uh, really uh, leverages the power of Clubhouse. And, and it's also a lead generation project. So lead generation through Clubhouse, I think, is going to be really powerful. I love it. Well, we, we look forward to hearing more as you're able to share it. Thanks again, Alex, uh, for all that you've done. Uh, really appreciate it. And Alex has been a contributor to this. Uh, I send him some love emoticons uh, in the chat. You know, Alex has been an amazing contributor to the digital marketing community now for going on 30 years uh, uh, or 20 years, I should say, but, you know, from when he was teaching at uh, University of Miami to the volunteer work he's done, uh, you know, on behalf of all of us, you really are a pioneer, uh, a, a social media assembly and a digital marketing assembly and, and everything that you've done uh, with the, the unconferences. So thanks, Alex. Um, and uh, we'll miss you, but we'll stay in touch. I look forward to taking you to coffee soon. Uh, when it's safe, let's get vaccinated. Um, I wanted to introduce uh, some of the other coaches uh, and instructors as well. Um, so we have uh, uh, Natalie Dupont, Ricardo Barris, Tatiana McDaniel, and Nathan Kruger were the other instructors of this amazing group. Um, thank you guys so much for all that you've done. Um, and uh, let's get to today's program. So we're gonna be going over some case studies of real life campaigns. We're gonna have a graduation ceremony. You guys are here attending a graduation. We'll take a class photo. Uh, maybe we take the photo now actually, because I know that Alex um, might not be able to stay past one o'clock. Uh, so maybe we'll take the class photo now. We'll do the Biz Hacker uh, Award, which is the highest, or awards in this case, there are two, the highest honor uh, in all of Biz Hack Academy. And throughout, we'll be doing thank you gifts raffle and a special musical surprise. So um, with your guys' permission, uh, I think let's do the class photo now so we can include Alex in it. Uh, Lucas, if you're able to uh, take your, um, put your screen on momentarily, I know uh, that might not be possible. If everybody could start their screens, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll do a couple photos. I'll hand it over to Lilia and she'll walk us through it. Can you stop sharing your screen then? So then we can see their beautiful face. Oh, Alex, uh, Oliver has joined. People are joining. This is your last chance. So let's put on gallery mode. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we have several pages, so I'm gonna take different pictures. Oh, Amy, you really have like the, the real thing. I love it. Okay, so great. Uh, smile, open your eyes. One, two, three. Okay, let me go to the other screen. We have some people with their cameras off. You're able to put your camera on. That will be great. One, two, three. Great, now we're here celebrating a crazy one. You did it. You have your family here, so a crazy one. One, two, three. Hold up, pose. Lucas, thank you for turning on your video. Really appreciate it. I hope you're feeling good. 
One, another crazy one. One, two. Boy, oh, hey, let's go. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> uh, all right. So good. I'm glad we were able to do that with everybody here. Great to have you guys. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, usually we say that for later, but that was, uh, I want to make sure everybody can be a part of that. So, um, all right. So we're going to start with our thank you gifts raffle. So this is a tradition uh, that we've been doing for a couple years now. Um, and this is really to acknowledge that we are not here alone. Um, I see that there are some uh, family members on here. Thank you guys so much for inviting your loved ones. Um, you know, we know that this is a huge commitment uh, that all of you have made uh, and that it has an, had an impact uh, on your friends and your family. Uh, it's taken you away from a lot of things over the last, um, you know, 90 days. And we want to acknowledge that and thank our loved ones and our friends and our family for making this experience possible. And so a number of you have very generously given um, some gifts uh, to acknowledge that we are a community and that we do this, uh, that we are stronger together. Um, and we're going to be raffling those off right now. Uh, so the first one is a 30-minute brand audit with Moonlight Creative, Dawn Newsom, And the winner is... Williams Holmes. William Holmes, congratulations. Next, uh, Audrey Salazar, my cousin uh, by marriage of Diminished Value Associates. She's given us a $50 Visa gift card. And the winner is? Ben Talusig. Ben, congrats. And finally, for this first round, we actually have nine different awards uh, throughout, so stick around to the end. Uh, we have a free posture assessment and consultation um, with Jacqueline Tibbet of Heel Match, who you'll be hearing from shortly during her real life campaign. And the winner is? Joey Kegler. Denise's relative. Congratulations, guys. Um, I wanted to share a little bit about BizHack by the numbers. Uh, so you guys are part of more than 2,000 businesses that we've trained basically since the start of COVID. Um, 756 businesses have, been, have received digital marketing certificates from us since 2015. And we've had 40 BizHack Live weekly sessions free and open to the community like this since uh, uh, one year ago. So nearly one a week since the start of COVID. These are the Digital Titans. These are all of the amazing businesses that are part of the Digital Titans. Uh, we're gonna be uh, learning about a couple of you, but I want to acknowledge all of you and the incredible work that you've done. I specifically wanted to call out you, Peggy Gonder. I saw you just stood up. Uh, Peggy was an extraordinary, uh, persevering participant. She did everything uh, to overcome technical challenges and even generated two leads for her Sudanese nonprofit. Uh, so proud of you, Peggy, and all the work you did. Amy Williams, you've been an incredible community builder. Not only have you been doing work in, in, in Clubhouse, but you've also been um, uh, organizing uh, study groups and sessions so that you guys could work together uh, on these projects in, in addition to the actual um, five hours of curriculum a week that each of you are participating in. Uh, amazing. Thank you, Amy, for uh, really building this community, which is a huge part of what we're all about. Um, and, uh, you know, Christy Kano from Spa Resources, you, you were uh, an amazing uh, participant, uh, gave me great feedback on how we could enhance the course, and I so appreciate all that you did as well. So as a group, you guys ran 35 campaigns on Facebook. You spent a little bit over $2,500 in those campaigns. You generated 93 leads and a lifetime value of sales of $31,700. Uh, as a group, that is a return on ad spend of 12.6x, which is a really admirable result. Now, a lot of you guys are still uh, learning. Um, you didn't generate a ton of leads, uh, or you might be working with these leads to see if they might actually become customers. So a lot of the sales, a lot of the leads in the sales are really what's going to come next. 
Uh, but just look at what you were able to accomplish in the few weeks of the, pro the program. It's an extraordinary result, and I'm so proud of all of you. Um, we're going to start now with our real life campaign presentations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brief introduction uh, and then I'm going to hand it over to you to share your screen and, uh, and, and we'll go from there. This case study is one of the most special case studies uh, ever in BizHacks history. And the reason why is because it features an extraordinary 14 year old girl who is doing the most amazing work with her nonprofit, Zoe's Dolls. So Zoe Terry took the course with her mom, Nakia Bowling, and often had to uh, join us uh, after school uh, for, for the program and the classes. Her story of me, which you'll hear shortly, uh, is uh, one of the best I've ever heard uh, of anyone at any age. And it's such an honor uh, Zoe and Nakia, to work with you, to support you, and to watch as your nonprofit flourishes, leveraging in part some of what we taught you about how to raise awareness and market and 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 tell the world about what you're doing through online tools. So, uh, I welcome Zoe Terry and Nakia Bowling of Zoe's Dolls, and thank you, Zoe, so much for taking some time off of school uh, to actually join us here today. Thank you. So, good afternoon and congratulations to all of um, our fellow classmates. This has been a very enriching um, process um, for both myself and for mm -hmm. Zoe as well. Um, you guys are the most supportive group of people that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. So thank you so much. And here's our real life case study. When I was in first grade, I was bullied with the color of my skin and the texture of my hair. I was the only one in my class that looked like how I did. I was the only one with dark skin and puffy, kinky, curly hair. On top of that, my fine and gross motor skills were bad due to a stroke I had. These girls would make fun of me because of the color of my skin and the texture of my hair. They would call me slowpoke because I couldn't ride the tricycle as fast as they could. But instead of staying in that negative and dark place, I wanted to do something positive about that. I started my company called Zoe Sauls because I wanted to let black girls know that their image is beautiful and they are special just the way they are. And since I was five years old, I loved playing with dolls. So I thought that dolls were a great way to portray the message that black girls are beautiful just the way they are. Since starting Zoe Sauls eight years ago, I've given out over $36,000 to girls all over. I've reached over 40,000 girls I've expanded Zoe Sauls into six empowering programs to let girls know that they are beautiful and special just the way they are. My name is Zoe Terry. I am 14 years old. My pronouns are she, hers, and hers, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. I'm a single mom uh, raising a beautiful, strong black girl um, who is determined and focused. I come from a family of six siblings where I'm the only girl, I'm the oldest. Um, so I've always had to kind of have this leadership role. And when my daughter was bullied because of the color of her skin and the texture of her hair, I really wanted to do something to assist her to move from this place of negativity into this place of positivity and change the paradigm of where she was at. And so that was my, that became my mission in life besides being her mom is to help her overcome these situations that she would undoubtedly face as a black woman in society. I am Nakia Bowling. I am the mother of Zoe Terry and I am the director of programs at Zoe Dolls. So one of the biggest problems that we look to solve to solve with Zoe's Dolls is how do we really expand this eight and a half year old company of this young CEO? Um, we 
developed a really good branding in the community for our dog giveaways. People knew that she was the dog girl is what they kind of dubbed her. Um, and we, and I myself was not so familiar with digital marketing and how to effectively really use it to expand our brand. And as my daughter got older, her advocacy voice increased and it matured with her age. And so she wanted to talk about things that were really affecting her community, affecting women. Her advocacy grew to talk about gender inequality. Did a, a purchased an ad before. I thought I had purchased the ad before, but really after um, being in um, BizHack, I learned all that I had really done was boost the post. Um, which is nowhere near, near the same. I'd never made a video uh, that was an ad campaign ever um, in my life. It was very, very intimidating at first, and I really wanted it to be just perfect. Um, and so on top uh, so on top of not having a familiarity with digital marketing, I had to put together this video ad that was really a daunting task for me, but we got through it. We created our ad. We were so excited about our first ad. We had everything we wanted in it. It was the first video ad we ever made. It's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It wasn't the most crisp or even the highest quality compared to what my other classmates had put together. Their stuff was phenomenal, but it was ours and we owned it and we loved it and we really felt accomplished about it. Hello, my name So the results. Huh. Whew. So we did all of that with our video and the results were not what we were expecting. Our ad did not yield the results we were hoping. Our primary target audience were really Black women between the ages of 34 and 54 who liked things like Essence magazines, O magazines, who were advocates of girls, um, were the audience um, that looked like us. It was, um, that was our target audience. What we got was mostly men aged between uh, 25 to 54. 25 to 44. How, how could this be possible? We were sure about our audience. Well, we have one of the best, we have one of the best coaches in the game, I think, Mr. Ricardo Barris. He immediately um, sat down with us to figure out where the needle had skipped, right? Like where did, what happened? What, how could it go wrong? Like what, what, what happened? So um, the first thing that he did was look at our ad and as soon as he looked at, at our ad, he discovered, oh, I think we figured out the, the problem. The first frame of our ad just says, meet Zoe. So men seeing something that says, meet Zoe, didn't really sound like a ad for a nonprofit. It sounded like an ad for, ooh, meet Zoe. And so a lot of men clicked on that. But as soon as the next frame came and we could see that in our data and in our analytics, the next frame came and they saw this little young girl talking about her project. They immediately clicked off. Um, so it was evident by our um, through plays that what people thought they were going to get was not what they got. And so we made the decision at the advice of our coach to end the ad before the end date, which is what we did. So I just wanted to include a little graphic here so that you could see our age and gender um, distribution, how significant it was of uh, how we have way more men than women um, to look at this. But from this, our impressions, we got 20,305 impressions. We had 15,456 clicks, but we did not want our ad to go to waste. So we took that same ad and we posted it on Instagram. And we also posted it just on our regular Facebook pages. And we actually generated some leads. We got Zoe got three speaking engagements from this. Um, we also had a ton of interviews that 
ensued after this. She has been on WEDR. She's been on Hot 105, Good Morning America, 99, we sit WEDR. Um, we, we got um, 10 new people who joined our newsletter just from seeing the ad that we created in this class. Um, the results, what we what we learned, I think the biggest result that we learned, it's okay if you don't get it right the first time out the box. You can always go back and improve it. And one of the things that um, I personally really learned was that you have to use your best selling point. Like Ricardo um, instructed, like Zoe should have been the first thing that people see. So they know right out, right out the box. They People know Zoe. They can uh, generate. Uh, resonate with her and even people who don't know her um they see this young woman they're like oh what is she up to let me do it let that be your selling point um the video ad should have probably contained more pictures than text and should have been a little bit shorter um and it's really important to understand what your call to action is in the ad and again it's okay to get it wrong or if it's not perfect the aha moment we did have some major uh, aha moments. Um, Zoe herself is our biggest marketing tool. We should use her at, at when, it, when possible um, all the time if we can. Use her image and likeness to draw attention to our brand. Um, Dan said one of the most profound thing, it was like low hanging fruit. I can't even believe I missed it. He said, use your newsletter more effectively. Um, literally, I almost fell out the chair. He suggested to use our newsletter to post things that would maybe appeal to an audience that wasn't our core audience, like articles on how to raise a woke white child or how to teach your child to appreciate different cultures. Um, it, it was just like, wow, yeah, that's perfect. Um, and also, when at all possible, let Zoe do the talking and sell the brand. People react to her. Um, so those were our definitely aha moments. So what's next for us? We are definitely going to increase our skills in digital marketing. We are going to run more ads. As a matter of fact, we're in the process of, of running, um, preparing to run our second ad. I was determined Facebook had, Facebook had put a block on us until we could verify our identity, um, but they've lifted that now. So we're definitely going to run our second ad sometime this week. We're in the process of revamping our newsletter to incorporate the suggestions that Dan gave us. Um, we also build, build out our landing page that was suggested for POV with Zoe that was um, suggested by um, our coach, Ricardo. We fully have that landing page up and running and it's connected to an email server site. Um, and we're going to launch the podcast in summer of 2021. And I just wanted to show our landing page because Ricardo was so instrumental in helping us get this um, done. He has been fantastic and we got it done. Our landing page is up. And right now we've got over 120 signups um, just with the landing page being up a little less than a week and a half. So we're super excited about that. And that is everything. This class has been amazing. It has really changed my life. I feel more empowered. I don't think I know everything, um, digitally involved. but I'm definitely uh, more digitally involved as though we would say. So this is, <laughs> this has been amazing. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Amazing. You know, and I, I I've been um, uh, Zoe's and, and Nakia's coach, and I, I have to tell you, you know, I don't want to repeat uh, what she has said, but I really want to encourage you to continue to be empowered. I do feel like there's so much that um, that you both uh, can learn and continue to learn. But I've I've never been this excited and motivated to really see transformation happening through through Zoe and uh, and yourself. So congratulations. I'm really, really proud of you just, uh, you know, knowing where you came from to where you are. Like, there's always this uh, magic moment that takes place in the Visa community, taking people from this to that, and, and that becomes exciting each time. And so I'm very excited for you, and congratulations, and keep up the good work, and whatever else I can do 
to continue to add value. I mean, the BSAC community, Dan has always been phenomenal in, in the encouragement and the feedback to you. So keep it up and let us know how best we can continue to help you to thrive. And I'd love to hear, Zoe, what's next for you? I know you're, uh, what grade are you in and, and what class did you just, sorry? I was in world history. <laughs> <laughs> so you just skipped world history. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. And uh, what grade? I'm in ninth grade. Awesome. At what school? I go to Miami Country Day School. Excellent. So what's next for you, Zoe? Obviously, uh, the, the world is your oyster. What are you thinking uh, in terms of the next couple years? What are you hoping to accomplish in high school or do next with uh, Zoe's Dolls? And then uh, obviously the podcast. And then uh, where do you want to go to college? Um, so I have a couple options right now, but I, I really want to go to Berkeley, but I also want to, because I want to major in political science. I want to be in the political field. I want to start off as a lawyer. Okay, I don't really, really need to get into that, but um, I should, it's probably better if I go to school in Florida, so probably like UF, but I really want to go to Berkeley or um, Princeton too. I know a really nice guy who's a Princeton alumnus if you need to talk to him. Yeah, and I'm... <laughs> And I'm really excited because I'm really into writing right now. I've always been really passionate about writing. So I'm working on a second book. I kind of want to take it a different angle with more poetry and story writing than anything. I really want to develop my voice in writing more and tell stories because I really enjoy telling stories. And That's awesome. There's a beautiful, uh, you know, I, I got my master's in the creative writing program at FIU and it's a fabulous program and they might even have some uh, classes that are available to undergraduates. So uh, I, I know the world is going to be yours and I can't wait to keep in track and, and, and please stay in touch. One other quick thing about um, Nakia is Nakia hasn't talked about this a lot, but she is the head of programs for the Opelaka CDC, uh, works very closely with my wife at Catalyst Miami and is a, a, a really important contributor to our community. Um, and I just want to thank you uh, on behalf of all of the families that need, uh, have been struggling uh, for, for the work that you and your staff does. Thank you. Thank you. I also have a gift for everyone. So um, I, wanted to, I wanted to empower girls. So I wanted you guys to help me with that message. So I, I want to give everyone a doll, an empowering letter, and in hopes for you to give out to a girl, any girl in your community that you think should have a doll and a letter just to show, to, to empower them and to let them know they're beautiful. I have an eight-year-old who lives in my house with me who I think will really be excited about the doll. Uh, I have actually a really quick, funny story about that. So the, the first doll that we ever gave my daughter uh, is a black doll. Uh, so we did that like, you know, we're, we're like woke white folks. So we gave her a black doll. Uh, and then when Henry was, uh, so that's my eight-year-old. And then when Henry was still in utero and we wanted to do a gender reveal, <laughs> We gave my daughter another doll. It was a boy doll. And she immediately called him Maria. Um, <laughs> she really wanted a sister badly. So anyway, we have uh, two little dolls. Uh, one is a black girl doll that she loves, Cece. And then uh, a little uh, boy doll named Maria. <laughs> so we'll, we could use one more doll uh, to round out the group. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna share my screen now. And uh, Jackie, you're up next. Neat. All right. This case study is uh, a beautiful example of how to market a marketplace. So a marketplace is one of the hardest challenges of all of marketing because you have to bring together the practitioners, the participants, and the clients. A great example is Uber, where you have to have the drivers on one place, and you have to have the people who are going to be uh, drive, uh, driven around on the other. Heal Match matches therapists and people who need um, the, the kind of work that they provide. And it's a really challenging marketing uh, challenge that, that Jackie has undertaken and that any marketplace undertakes because you have to market to both. And your product really depends on having a lot of high quality therapists in there so that you have something to market to the potential users of this service. 
Now, what, one of the things I want to point out to you is the last two slides before she wraps up, Jackie talks about how she targeted a specific persona and then carried that targeting through every step in the customer journey. And it's one of the best examples we've ever seen of someone really understanding all of the pieces and putting them together in a couple of slides. So I really uh, am excited to welcome Jacqueline Tibbet, founder and CEO of Heal Match. Thank you for that wonderful intro, Dan. And a great job, Nakia and Zoe. Looking forward to my doll. All right, let me share. As Dan mentioned, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Tibbet. I'm the founder of Heal Match. And Heal Match is a marketplace, as Dan said, where we match massage therapists to customers focusing on massages healthcare. Now think of match.com meets Angie's List. Um, we are working first to get quality massage therapists. So the campaign that I came into BizHack with was to subscribe massage therapists to our new massage marketplace. And I wanted to use BizHack because I wanted to come from a place of authentic storytelling. And I also wanted to come from a place of authority and knowledge with my marketing team, some of whom are here today. I really appreciate them joining. So without, whoa, without further ado, oh, I'll kind of this, I didn't load. Um, without further ado, let me tell my story of me. Let's see. I'm going to exit. Sorry for the technical difficulty. So my story of me is, as of course, is a story of us. Um, when I was seven, my father was working 100-hour weeks and not paying attention to his health. He had a stroke at 40. Here's my parents uh, pictured with me here. Both of them are on the call today. My family uprooted our lives for his rehab. It was a long road and he still needs 24-7 care. Over the years, I've been to every type of medical appointment. And I'll tell you, no one has brought vitality back to my dad, like his physical therapists, who literally reached together with him towards his goals. So my early experiences taught me that, number one, preventative wellness saves lives. And number two, when a health provider gives undivided hands-on attention, magic happens. Now, I've spent my career on different sides of health, earning a PhD in neurophysiology and practicing as a massage therapist. And I'm working to make massages healthcare easier with a new online platform. Hi, I'm Dr. Jacqueline Tibbet, founder of Heal Match, and I improve people's lives by matching them to the right specialist massage therapist for their needs. I'm focusing today of the entire BizHack journey on just a case study of our uh, problem, which was a disjointed and unclear customer journey. If you don't know what that is, you'll learn. And, and the solution and the results we got from it. The solution was to clarify our customer journey using BizHack's advice, coaching, and, and the lessons we learned. And our results is that our team has better access to our lead info, our potential therapists, the process is more efficient and it's so much easier for me to write ad scripts because I know who I'm talking to and what stage of their journey they're at. So this is an example map of a customer journey. This was the one we kind of started with and it's an unclear journey. And the results of an unclear journey is that um, this leads to lack of follow-up. So if we have some leads or potential customers, we might lose them uh, before we get a chance to talk to them. Uh, the offers that we're giving them might be unclear, and I think this leads to a loss of therapists uh, who could be our customers. One of the bad habits we had is um, that we had a call to action from our ad that was linked to our main website, and this can be very confusing because you just see the whole website and the customer doesn't always know where to go or what to do first. Another bad habit we had was um, that we did cold call sales. Actually, this had good results, but it risks a bad reputation and it's kind of spammy when we're just calling people from a registry. 
Our solution was to clarify our journey with this advice. Uh, my coach Ricardo walked me through a lot of this. He taught me how to use yes, no logic. So there's only at each stage, there's only one thing you can do at each point. The customer says yes to this thing or they say no to this thing and then they proceed from there. Our ad now directs to a landing page instead of to our homepage. So there's just one thing the customer can do there or the potential customer. We've involved new automation um, and it, the calls we're placing now after uh, someone fills out a landing page. So I think there's more consent there. And in addition, um, in our emails that they get from us, we're trying to modify our offers. So what the customer is offered to the stage of the journey they're at. And as uh, my coach Ricardo Barris would call it, uh, each time you talk to them, you want to sweeten the deal. So this hack and our coach have worked extensively with us to help clarify this journey. Um, I'm not gonna focus on my first ad, which is about brand awareness. The second ad is uh, we retargeted the people who saw our first ad for the purpose of having them sign up. So again, this is all geared towards therapists. I only had to run the ad for four days. So only got to spend $21 on it. And those $21, 4,000 people saw it and 50 people clicked on the button and to sign up, which was a, a click-through rate of 1.25%. That's actually not bad. Uh, if you notice on the left, um, we did target both genders um, and the, it was more expensive to get females to click than males. And um, on the right is just a snapshot of what our ad looked like, which was just me speaking to therapists and saying, this is our offer, this is why you should sign up. We actually had no form fills from that landing page, but now we're getting a few people indirectly that might have interacted and said that they used Facebook to find us. So um, we've had a few new leads come in, but no one directly from that ad. And that's okay. It's okay, this is all a learning process. One of my biggest insights from, or ahas from this hack is, confused people don't make decisions. So I don't know where the original quote came from, but when Ricardo said it, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Number one, uh, we can't be sending people multiple links and not knowing what we're gonna do with them at each stage. But number two, this includes me. Like, if I don't know what I'm giving my customers, how will they? So it's my biggest takeaway from this hack and something I uh, aim to incorporate into my life and marketing strategy, especially. <laughs> The second insight is uh, a little more technical, so I'm not gonna go through it step-by-step step like I did with my class. It's to stay targeted to your persona or the people that you are offering to. So your persona should match this pathway and every time they interact with you, they're going to get something that's really speaking to them. And that includes the final offer that they give. Um, if you are interested in taking this class or interested in marketing and you don't know what these steps are, I guarantee you by the end, you will. So what's next for Heal Match? Well, we refine and repeat. Uh, we take what we learned and we try to improve on it. So uh, no one signed up. We wanna know, was our offer actually targeted to our persona? Um, to do that, we're going to improve some things like next time you run an ad, we use a single gender instead of both gender audience, uh, give the ad more runtime. Um, and uh, we actually talk to customers just for the purpose of learning more about them to see whether the people that we think we're talking to really have this, uh, really want what we're offering. And with that, I would love to thank BizHack and the Digital Titans team. Everyone has been amazing. It's been a really fun journey. Uh, we need eyes on pages. So whether you're in Florida or not, please follow us. Uh, we're at Heal Match on Instagram or Heal Match Us on Facebook. If you are in Miami, if you're ready for a massage or when you get that vaccine and you're ready for a massage, please use heal-match.com to find your massage therapist. We look forward to uh, seeing you more. Thank you so much to everyone. Great, uh, you know, as as the uh, coach for uh, for Jacqueline and Heel Match, um, I wanted to ensure that uh, there was a clear understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. And in, in the biz hack, we teach these steps that uh, every participant is required to follow in order to extract the best results. And what you saw there on the last uh, slides for. For Jacqueline, she demonstrated in the most efficient way, as Dan um, alluded to earlier, 
how you should really think about the message that you have for your customer and not necessarily wanting to confuse them. I didn't create the quote, uh, but I did hear it from another mentor of mine. So I, I kind of paid it forward. Confused people do not make decision. And so um, you want to ensure that you get rid of any semblance of confusion that might uh, be portrayed to your customers or your potential customers. Uh, and that will very, very much help you. But as you could see in the last slide for her, she, she illustrated very perfectly how one message is for one persona and so forth until you get to convert that persona. So I really hope that that was also helpful as a way to, to, to learn from, from each other as you're presenting. So congrats to Jacqueline. Um, I think you, you did very well and you keep that up. Scientifically, you will see results, but I, I'm certain that uh, uh, you will also be able to enjoy more learning as you, as you progress. So congrats. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, yeah, you know, th th that is just textbook marketing. Um, and I, 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 I hope you guys all see how clear and simple and systematic it is. It is a lot of work. It is a lot of work. But if you do that and you do that successfully, you're marketing like IBM, you're marketing like the big boys. That is how they market. And this is why they have large budgets and large staffs. And, you know, it's, 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 it's time consuming. But if you can create an ad that targets a specific persona with a specific message and then carry that out all the way down through the marketing funnel, through the customer journey, you're gonna have a higher likelihood of success. That's what's so brilliant, frankly, about digital advertising, is that digital advertising allows you to create those kind of customer journeys uh, and that kind of specific targeting where you know exactly who you're talking to every step of the way. Uh, very different than what you can do on a website where it has to be by nature a more generic message. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Matinicus, you doing okay? I see you're getting interrupted by folks at work. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and then you're up. Okay. This case study is a beautiful example of how an innovative product that nobody's ever heard of can market itself through a combination of educational marketing and really solid lead generation. Matinica Sanger is with Pathwaves. I'm a client of Pathwaves. It is a neuro reprogramming uh, regimen that is so innovative that uh, it takes a little bit of explaining uh, before you hook those electrodes up to your brain. And so that's a big marketing challenge. And it's a challenge that a lot of folks do who are creating new pathways in their chosen segment where they've created a brand new product and they have to first educate the public about that product and then convince them that they're the best choice for it. I know when I was working at a software startup, we did marketing gamification, a relatively new concept. And so we had to educate our potential customers about what the heck marketing gamification even was. This is playing games in your marketing and then convince them that our software solution was the right one. So I really sympathize with Matinicus's challenge, which is not insignificant to essentially create a new market for a brand new kind of service. Matinicus, uh, it's great to have you. You were a fabulous participant in the class. Matinicus Sengar of Pathwaves. Okay, can everyone hear me all right? Excellent, you're, you're thank right. you Dan for the, uh, the introduction. I, uh, I, I appreciate the, the, the sympathy and the, the sim similar kind of experience. Um, it is certainly a worthwhile challenge though. So the story of me when, well, my name is Matenica Sanger. Um, I am named after an island off the coast of Maine um, it has a beautiful harbor and a very tiny airstrip. I recommend you go visit it. It has a lovely bakery. When I was in college, I, or when I went to college, I started wanting to work with startups in the tech and STEM fields. And that was because I had the belief that there were plenty of amazing researchers doing outstanding science and not enough people to communicate the value of their findings to investors, consumers, and ultimately government. Um, when I was a sophomore in college, that was the first time I really struggled with mental health. 
as so many in our country do. And what made it especially difficult was that I couldn't understand the reason why I was struggling, why it felt like I couldn't sleep, eat, or even think, why it felt like I was alone when I saw my friends and family around me helping me, supporting me. I built some pretty strong coping techniques and I got through and I thought I was doing well enough until 2019 when I went to Pathwaves for five days and my life completely changed. They taught me via the neuroscience, via the education required to get to a place where you can really utilize what we do here. That all culminated in teaching me why I am the way I am. And they did a lot more than treat my mental health. They showed me how the human brain and mind interact and function with one another. They showed me that they were onto something that would soon change the world. So I believe that we as a species are on the cusp of helping people and understanding one another like we never have before. We'll soon live in a world where veterans don't struggle with PTSD, where depression is well understood and easily helped, and where everyday people can be fully themselves without any of the shame or hesitation that currently limits them and holds them back. Ultimately, where people who struggle with mental health can get real answers um, rather than never ending prescriptions and years and years of therapy. So my name is Metenicus, and I help everyday people change their lives really quickly. Our case study, um, I identify three problems that I really wanted to work on. Identifying the target market and tailoring the message, generating qualified leads for that market, and then improving overall the customer viewer interactions with my education material. In identifying the market, I developed a profile called the Chief Human Capital Officer, the CHCO. Um, and I believe this is because entrepreneurs are not necessarily the lowest hanging fruit for our marketing, but the biggest avenue of growth um, in terms of people who are looking for a real solution that can help them bring their company up to their dreams. Um, I found that I had appropriate placement um, and highly specific attributes for these people, but my message was communicated in a way that did not really drive urgency with them. I was marketing our results, our efficacy, because I believe that is our strongest kind of, what makes this program great is that you get those results quickly rather than having to go through years of therapy. Um, but ultimately results aren't sexy. Generating qualified leads was the second struggle um, I, or second challenge. I overcame this using what BizHack taught me about the two-step verification process um, for these lead gen forms on Facebook. Um, so I utilized that second step to create more qualified leads. And ultimately, um, one challenge I am looking to overcome is connecting a lead gen form to a calendar application so that people can book consultations with me directly from the Facebook lead. And then improving that connection, that communication of what is truly something challenging to communicate. Um, I redesigned the second ad per some of your suggestions, um, starting with some of the outcomes from our treatment that you can expect, um, cutting some of the non-essential material and shortening the overall length. This worked for creating a shorter video that got to the point faster. It did not work for really engaging with people in a way that was going to generate leads. And I got some feedback on why that might be from some of my coworkers. My second ad, my insights from it are, well, its performance was, was poor, uh, to be honest with you. All the dollar per lead, everything metrics were off. And I expect this is partially due to the retargeting of my audience based on through plays, rather than sticking with my initial audience design from the start. This process has taught me, just to continue on some of those insights, that the existing marketing we have, our branding and our awareness, is more important than I had originally given it credit. I kind of went out on a limb to try to market what I believe is our most competitive asset, our effectiveness, um, but my results suggest that I really pushed maybe a little bit too hard on the education component and 
should have possibly saved that for a video library once people had already converted into leads. The client's true interest and understanding in what this can do for them really only comes after the consultation. Sometimes when people ask me what I do, I, I joke, you know, you got, you got half an hour and two PowerPoints, because um, that's really what it requires to get down to the bones of how we can help you. Prior to the consult, I think the best way they find us is when we advertise solutions and build awareness. There, there's no rushing people into consideration. And in the future, my messaging will focus more on the efficacy. I, I really like this angle, but it will utilize some of the luxury brand persona and feel that our social media accounts have already worked to build. Again, those results were fairly poor, 619 impressions down to 11 clicks, two leads, and ultimately zero conversions. I think people didn't stay on the ad long enough for them to understand what we can do with them. And that's not on them. Uh, that's on me for creating an ad that did that. My biggest ahas, um, the people really do buy based on emotion. And a good explanation might satisfy me, but it's not going to bring in customers. So I can save that explanation for later down the road once they're in the consideration phase. This one, I like that it rhymes. Um, awareness in planting seeds is greater than rushing leads. Uh, that's a big aha that I learned from this whole experience. And then the quality content, save it for a video library. Once people sign up for your email list, keep the 30 minute discussions in there. What's next for me is I'm going to expand our existing marketing campaign um, using some of what I learned in BizHack. Uh, we're moving into what we call a red carpet defined end program. You've probably seen advertisements for these, something like a five week fitness boot camp. Our base option, I want it to be in the $2,000 range. Um, and we're working right now on automating some of our systems to enable this. Um, you can expect to get these results, you know, feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, and focused in this time frame. And I, I really do stand by that claim. Our better program is really more of our basic program. This is about learning how to get past just coping. Because you can learn how to cope from a decent psychologist in about a year. We can accomplish that with you in four days. The rest of our sessions in this program are what to do past coping. Because coping is, is just managing. There's, there's very little joy in it. There's very little creating what you really want to create while you're just managing the, the things that life is throwing at you. And then our best program would be a fully customized experience to help you sleep, feel, and just generally perform better than ever before. Um, this is getting all of your nervous system online with your intentions. If a soccer player walks out onto a field and wants to perform their absolute best, it's going to require that their nervous system isn't making their palms sweat. It's not making their heart race. Uh, their, their, you know, hormone glands, all of that are firing in ways that are appropriate for their position on the field. Um, ultimately, it's having full control over your breath, nervous system, feeling, mood, performance at, at a, almost a cellular kind of level. So thank you for your time, everybody. Um, that is my number. Feel free to text me on my business cell. And as always, you can email me. So thank you so much. As, uh, as Martinicus coach, uh, Martinicus, it's, it's been fantastic and you are the perfect example on how to learn from the experience and and you've analyzed and uh you really looked at the results and very humbly you identified you know what could be improved upon you were you have done such a great job learning from these campaigns and really identifying quickly when there was an, uh, an issue. Uh, you've been, uh, because you were doing this quickly too, you've been looking for answers, right? And uh, reaching out when you really needed it. But, um, and I have to say, Martinicus was always like really busy, but it really made the time. And I know everybody is super busy, right? And voila. So there was always phone calls, you know, and uh, but he, he really uh, found the time and really understood 
the link between uh, between marketing and sales and that it was not you know marketing was one thing and sales was another one so um uh, so really made the link between the two um Martinicus was also very creative that's a complex product right so um using the doodle to explain this complex product was just brilliant now quickly you identify that okay is great but i was explaining the product i was not um giving enough of what you get out of the product you know so um so martinicus I'm, I'm i'm so proud i think you're on a great path um i think one of your strengths too is that you are um, so passionate about it and the greatest pleasure is to work with someone who truly wants to help people. So congratulations, Martinicus. Thank you, Thank Natalie. Natalie. Thank Pleasure working, working, working with you as well. Fabulous, guys. Um, and uh, before we uh, it welcomes Zanat, our final of the regular presenters, uh, I wanted to take a moment and welcome again uh, Zilli uh, Huma, who uh, is, well, is uh, joining us from Pakistan. Uh, she is our first uh, Pakistani to complete the program. We also had a group from Taiwan. It's the middle of the night for them, so they couldn't join us today, although their CEO, Lloyd Nimitz, was here a little bit earlier. Um, and it's just an extraordinary gift to be able to bring uh, people into the BizHack family from around the world. From uh, We've had uh, Ghana, uh, we've had Dubai, uh, and now we have uh, Pakistan. So Zilli, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and uh, I really appreciate your guidance and especially the way uh, you teach me. Uh, I would like to introduce myself. I am Zile Huma from Pakistan, a Muslim girl and I just now started my digital marketing agency and luckily uh, I got opportunity to take a course with this Hack Academy and surprisingly this uh, this was just wow for me everything was aha because I'm going to serve in a field where I will be serving my clients for the digital marketing so it gave me just wonderful experience amazing knowledge uh, during this I applied advertisement campaigns which give me exclusive result and from now I am also getting ready for more campaigns within a uh, one week. I uh, hope it will give me a opportunity. And yeah, I'm so grateful and lucky. I am from Pakistan and far in future. Yeah, I'm telling everybody from Pakistan, like I got this amazing opportunity and I would like to introduce you with the biz hack who, who just changed my mind, who just increased my knowledge. Thank you so much, Dan, and all the team trainers and coaches. Thank you. And congratulations to my all classmates who did amazing jobs and all the presenters. This, this is just amazing and exciting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I know it's uh, a, wor a world away, but it's uh, it, the miracle of technology uh, is allowed you to be uh, part of our family and uh, we're here for you forever. Okay. So, you know, you stay in touch and you let us know how we can help you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I will be in touch. And if anybody wants to contact me, I am going to share my contact in a chat list. Perfect. All right. And so um, uh, now, now you're up, Zanat. I'm going to do a quick introduction and then you'll get started. And uh, Zanat had to run over to a cafe because she was having internet issues. So thank you for being resilient and sticking with us. Uh, we're all excited to see your presentation. Thank you. Um, All right, so I'll do a quick introduction and then you'll you'll share your screen, okay? Okay. And um, yeah. are you, it's it's a little hard to hear you. I don't know if you can take the mask off uh, where yeah. you are. Take it off for now, yeah. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me anybody? All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's still a little, It's yeah, it's, it should be okay. All right. 
So this is a case study of a one of the most common types of businesses that we get in BizHack, which is coaching and consulting services, uh, where folks are, are often home-based businesses, and so they must rely on digital marketing because there's really no other way for folks to find them. And uh, this is also a case where, in, in the case of Firefly Bridge, which is a professional organizing service, where a lot of times you have to give in order to receive. So Zanat this evening, I believe, uh, is going to be running a uh, folding workshop where she teaches people how to fold their clothes, uh, adult-sized clothes. And this is a great example of what we call a free irresistible offer. If you're the type of person that likes to watch a folding workshop so you can fold better, you're probably a good candidate for her services. So without further ado, the amazing Zanat Siman of Firefly Bridge Organizing and Productivity. Okay, I'm so sorry. No problem. All right. So um, I suffered from postpartum depression after the birth of each of my three kids. And after I had my youngest son more than a decade ago, I was really completely overwhelmed. And one of the results of this was that my home became completely uh, cluttered, both with our own accumulated stuff and now with baby gear and kids toys and things like that. And also my to-do list just kept growing bigger and bigger. And all of that affected my mood, my sleep, and I couldn't feel really connected and present with my family. So when I started to recover, I found that I needed to simplify everything in order to feel lighter. So I started researching what the best way was to organize in order to simplify my life. And as I organized and reduced what I owned, I found that I started to enjoy doing more and spending time with my family and friends more. I felt inspired to train as a professional organizer and eventually I developed the CLEAR framework, which is the system that I use now to teach others how to organize their own homes. So my name is Zina Timan and I started Firefly Bridge Organizing because I wanted to share how I did this with other people who are going through the same kind of overwhelm that I felt. And I've made it my mission to teach others how to simplify and organize just like I did so that they can also live a life that feels unburdened and full of joy. Um, as Dan mentioned, I own a professional organizing company and really uh, clients came to me primarily through referrals. So uh, until 2020, um, my business was 100% in-home service. But once the pandemic hit, of course, nearly all home services were canceled and I knew that I had to begin organizing virtually, but I lacked any digital marketing knowledge to be able to get eyes on Firefly Bridge. And so this hack digital marketing marketers edge um, class helps to fill that gap. Uh, so my solution was to try to find my local audience online and learn to market effectively to them in order to generate leads. And my audience in general were Miami area women, um, ages 50, 35 to 54 with a higher household income with an interest in minimalism. When the, the this hack process, um, I created my first video views ad, but I mistakenly chose a US wide audience, not a local audience. And that ran for five days before I realized a mistake. So I had to decide what to do then. I decided I could continue my first ad, but then I concurrently ran the same ad for video views to a local audience. And um, after that ran for a bit, I created this um, second ad, which is a lead generation ad. And the irresistible offer here, as Dan mentioned, is a live folding workshop that I'm gonna be holding uh, tomorrow evening. So results for me, um, the my total spend on a US-wide campaign was 7,786. I had 1,047 impressions on the second ad, these results are for the second ad. 80 clicks, uh, 20 leads with a cost per lead of $1.75, had eight signups to the, um, the folding workshop. And I just closed a sale on Monday uh, for 1499 which already gives me a 19 uh, times ROI. And then the local spending, uh, 8377 was my total spend, 1,075 impression, 79 clicks, 16 leads, uh, for cost per lead of 211 I've had six signups. To, uh, for the folding workshop. And just before this, uh, this class, actually, I closed the sale for almost $1,000. But beyond that, the other results that I received from this class are um, 
that I now count for bit hackers as clients. And I also am in work in collaboration with a former bit hacker from the December Pinecrest class. And that to me is, is incredibly valuable, um, not only in terms of working with bit hackers, but also for continuing support that we're providing each other and, um, and for networking in general. So my biggest learnings um, are were how to find my audience online and how to use audience insights in Facebook to really hone in on that audience. To quickly fix my mistakes and move on, um, even though I made mistakes with my first ad, I just had to you know, figure out what to do and, and continue moving. And then mapping the customer journey. To me, that was big. I had really now been focused on each touch point. And before this class, I was focusing on the, the before they met me touch point and then the closing the sales touch point and nothing else. But also, I need to learn how to close sales. I realized that I think at closing sales and um, I need to be less apologetic and really learn how to do that well. So that's a big learning on my online side. And so um, if any of you are interested, I would like to offer for y'all to please join me tomorrow um, for the folding workshop. We have an interest in that. It's at seven o'clock. And thank you all very, very much. And I'm sorry for the for for the delay and the noise. <laughs> Yeah, so as a as Zinat coach, you know, I, I uh, well, first off, congratulations, uh, Zinat. Um, I want to say you have no idea how efficient and organized Zinat is. You know, she was number one. You know, already at the first lab, Zinat had everything already in line, done. You know, it was. Um, uh, for our, our one on ones, you know, everything was like, okay, this is what I've done. Let's address this, this, and that. It was, um, it, it, it was great. And, and I think, as in that throughout the process, I, I really saw you becoming more and more comfortable with the platform, with creating the ads, you know, so quickly you, you turned, you know, your second, second ad. Right. So, um, so for the second ad, for the retargeting ad, Zenat had done like a fantastic ad. I really liked it and actually had suggested to, to Alex and that, oh, you should feature it because it was great. And actually, meanwhile, Zenat had taken it down. She was like, no, 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 actually I should offer something free. So she, she changed her strategy so quickly. And, um, so, uh, so this, uh, congr congrats to, to you. Um, also, you learned from your error, uh, which was, you know, with your first ad to uh, uh, not target the local audience. However, it's opening up new markets for you, you know, so I, I think it's fantastic. And I, and, and I think, you know, it, it may definitely be like a, a growth opportunity for you, especially um, in this day and time. Um, I, I think, I don't know if you are a reflection of your business or if your business is a reflection of you. Um, but it, it, it has, uh, been such a pleasure and, um, uh, I think you should continue also telling the story of you and, and also featuring yourself because, uh, as I said, um, uh, there are a few uh, professional organizers uh, out there, but you are so aligned with your business and the story of you is so in line really with your business that you should uh, focus on that. So um, uh, it's been a pleasure and, and again, congratulations, Inat. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Here. So I wanted to share, guys, um, the the incredible leaps and and breakthroughs and ahas that you've been hearing about were not just unique to our four amazing presenters, but were actually part of all of your learning journeys. You can see just the incredible uh, advances that you guys made in your. Uh, self-assessment of your knowledge of these topics and just the confidence you felt in those. Uh, you also made concrete uh, 
improvements of 14% from the beginning to the end on the digital marketing test. Uh, that is one of the highest end scores we've ever seen from a group. And so I want to really congratulate you guys on that. Um, as a gentle reminder, today is your last day to do your final feedback survey and to take your test if you want to get a learning journey report. So I just, this will be your last reminder. We'll uh, please do it. Uh, we're going to be producing those overnight tonight and sharing with them with you soon. I wanted to do, uh, enter back into our thank you gifts raffle. Uh, Zoe of Zoe's Dolls is offering a Zoe's Dolls gift bag. Lilia, the winner is? Roseanne Isiamber. Congratulations, Roseanne. Uh, we have another $50 gift card from the amazing Audrey Salazar, and the winner is? Latricia Lee. And we have a Del Mar picnic set and cooler tote uh, from AB Unlimited Worldwide. Amy Williams does these kinds of um, often branded B2B um, promotional items. And so she's giving you an unbranded one. Uh, and the winner is? Jacqueline Frierson. Congratulations, everybody. We've taken the class photo. Uh, we just heard from uh, Natalie. Natalie, uh, welcome to the certified instructional team. Uh, you're an amazing talent, uh, an amazing coach, um, and uh, this was your first semester with us. I'm happy to report that you'll be back with us again as well. Uh, Nathan, Ricardo, and Tati are joining us as well. Guys, now is the moment uh, to just let everybody on the instructional team know how much you appreciate them. We have the best coaches in the world and we know that as good as the curriculum that we present and the structure that we've provided, it's really those one-on-one -on -one and group coaching sessions where the rubber hits the road, where you apply our best practices to the specific needs and challenges of your business and where the big leaps are made. And you've heard those wisdom and insights in all of these presentations, confused people don't make decisions or uh, other kind of little bits of wisdom that, we've, that we're all learning from each other. Um, it is a personal joy and pleasure to my teaching team to be able to interface and work with you guys every week. And I'm so blessed to have you be a part of our team. Thank you, Natalie, and thanks to all of you. We're now gonna go through the participant certificates. Uh, this is the graduation. Uh, and then after that, we're gonna be doing our big Biz Hacker Award winner and a musical surprise, so please stay tuned. Congratulations, Amy Williams of a AB Unlimited. Great to have you a part of the program. Armando Anderson, Audrey Salazar, Brenda Quatang. Brian Hammond, Christy Kano, Corey Jones, Dawn Newsom, Denise Kegler, Emma Glazer, Jacqueline Tibbet, Jane Moore. Jane, parenthetically, had more than 200 leads as part of her efforts. I can't wait to hear about you closing those, Jane, from Papagayo Luxury. Jen Hill, my neighbor. Jennifer Hawkins. Kim Kayajan. Then this is our Taiwanese team, Larry Liu. Linda Russell from Mugsy Clicks. Lucas Mendieta. Matinicus Sanger. Michelle DeFranzo, Nakia Bowling, Natasha Cho, Nathan Perry, Patsy Linares, Peggy Gonder, Shuying Chen, Zinat Simon, Zilli Huma, and Zoe Terry. Three Zs, that's a first. Congratulations, guys. Amazing. I'm so proud of all of you. And now, without further ado, uh, you guys uh, have complete control over the award winners for this. This is a vote that uh, folks take at the end of the semester to talk about those people who, in this program, have represented the highest values of what we call the biz hacker mentality, folks who are willing to embrace new challenges, work their tails off, experiment and try new things, 
and recognize that failure is merely an opportunity to learn. We believe that more than teaching you skills, we're teaching you a new mindset, a mindset that allows you type A, always perfect, super organized folks that sometimes making mistakes can be incredibly educational. And so, Zanat, don't be over-organized. Sometimes those mistakes can actually help you uh, make new discoveries. And so um, embrace those mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and don't feel like you guys need to be perfect because in the end, perfect is the enemy of the good when it comes to digital marketing. So I am so uh, honored uh, to welcome our uh, two, two Biz Hacker Award winners. We had, after two rounds of voting, uh, a deadlock that we could not break. And so we are rec recognizing Lucas Mendieta and Denise Kegler. And we're going to have Lucas present his final presentation first, and then Denise. Congratulations, guys. Welcome, Lucas. I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then you are on. Yeah. So cutting this case study of cutting edge elite and Lucas Mendieta is a beautiful example of how a heart led business can be immensely successful at the bottom line. And when you hear Lucas's incredible story of challenge overcome and then how he brought that the lessons he learned during that bumpy journey to the core values of the business that he and his colleague Nathan Perry run, you will understand why we at BizHack believe that the foundation of every successful small business is their business story and their story of me. If you successfully tell that story, you will attract the best talent, you will attract customers, you will make revenue, and you will make a change in the world and you will make it a better place. And it is with my great uh, honor, I welcome Lucas Mendieta, BizHacker Award winner of Cutting Edge Elite. Thank you, Mr. Dan. Um, I will share my screen now. Let me just that. And put a button here. Can you guys uh, see it and hear me? We hear you perfectly. Perfect. So this is pretty, this is a story of Cutting Edge Elite, but it's also the story of me and how both of my, my life and this business has intertwined and how we've in a way saved each other. Um, so I'll start off with the story of me. When I was 16 years old, I was chased out of my house for being gay in Greenville, South Carolina. So over the next couple of years, four years to be exact, I was initially sleeping in my car until my car got repossessed. I was on, on, on benches, under bridges, on friends' couches, literally all over the place. And I, I got to a point where I even had to figure out how to stretch $5, how I'm going to eat in a day. So I, I was super depressed and I attempted suicide multiple times. And throughout this whole process, eventually I made my, myself up to New York City in the fall of 2002, where because I didn't go to college or have any kind of business education, I could only get, you know, blue collared odd end jobs like construction, painting, you know, helping them move furniture, things of that nature. And then eventually I was working as a janitor and um, because it was, a, it was a point of either work as a janitor or go back home to South Carolina. And that just was not an option for me because that equated to death. And so I, I clean my toilets with pride and eventually I got laid off. And one of my friends says, oh, why don't you just work in catering and events? And I had no clue what that, what that was, but I did it. And I instantly fell in love working as a freelance cater waiter for all these random parties. It was for the first time in my life, I was passionate about something and I absolutely loved it. And so I wanted to learn more about the business. And so eventually I, I applied my street smarts into the business and, and, you know, then Cutting Edge Elite was born. I, I was able to save up a little bit of money. Eventually I had $1,500 in my hopes and dreams. And we all know that's not really much of nothing, especially in New York City, trying to get established. Um, I then met my business partner, Nathan Perry, working a random job by, by chance. And, and, you know, I told him what I was doing. We partnered up and then, you know, we, we started to form, you know, a business and come up with a game plan. And we were very fortunate that we found 
people and businesses that believed in us. And, and you know, because at the time I was 25, 26 years old, you know, so that's, you know, a lot of responsibility that people are going to trust us with. And so from the beginning, we wanted to make sure that we ran a completely ethical company and that we treated everybody that worked for us like family because I wanted to create the family that I felt like I never had. And so I, I like to say with a ragtag team of misfits and crazies, you know, who were my friends that we literally came together and we worked all these jobs and, and, and gave it 110% every single time. And, and through that, we were able to gain clients' trust and I was able to break through barriers because people assume, oh, you're young. We don't know if we can trust you with our business yet, but we had to work twice as hard to make sure we got that. And then eventually we started getting referred. And so a snowball effect happened for Nathan and I and, and Cutting Edge. And so we became one of the go-to staffing agencies in five years in New York City. And these are photos from, you know, a few of the thousands upon thousands of parties that we've staffed over time. And so, you know, we started to figure out, okay, what next? What can we do to help grow our business and get out of, you know, just New York City and even Atlanta? And so we became NGLCC certified on a national level, and that's National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. You know, we, we both applied and got accepted to Goldman Sachs uh, 10,000 businesses, I couldn't go. Nathan went in my stead because I had to man the fort. But obviously, I still learned every little thing that he that he learned as well, which was amazing. Um, you know, then we spent a good time, a little over a year, becoming a compass group and a food buy approved vendor on a national level. And now we're like the one thing that we don't know is marketing. So what do we do? And and through ten thousand businesses, we met Dan and BizHack. So we're like, aha, uh -huh, that's what we should do. We should take a course with them. Because obviously the problem was I had no clue what in the hell was happening with marketing. Like literally I would stare at business Facebook. It would look back at me and that's as far as we got. So, you know, we, the solution was let's take the BizHack course just so at least we can get some knowledge of what's going on and at least have some, you know, some information because we literally were starting from zero. So why not? And so, you know, we started to get some of the, the, the resources and, and understand some of the tools, at least when it comes to advertising on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn which really, you know, was a lot to help us out. This first funnel here is my, my first campaign. It was a brand awareness ad, just trying to get the name out there, you know, trying to figure it out. And I spent a total of 57, a little over $57 on there. We have 363 plays, over 5,300 impressions. Um, out of that, 339 web clicks. So, um, and it came out to uh, money per through play was 16 cents. But the one I really want to look at is the retargeting campaign. Um, initially, when I did it, I, I obviously said it wrong and I didn't know what I was doing. But thankfully, I had amazing Natalie Dupont, who was there to help me and clean up my ad. So the first ad that we that I ran retargeting, I only got two leads. The second ad that once Natalie helped me clean it up, I ended up getting 32 leads. Um, you know, and it was a little over 11,000 impressions, 8, a little over 8,200 reached, the 32 leads. Um, I just put a little bit more than I anticipated, but that's because I clicked the wrong button, but that's okay. It's a learning curve and I figured it out, but I ended up spending $249, $241.49, which came out to about $7.53 per lead. And I've, I've, I've been chatting with all those people right now. Events isn't coming back. So it's just a matter of waiting for that to come back um, when it comes to, to the events. But I estimated that even if only half of them ended up moving forward to use us, that's over $8,800 in sales right there and return on investment. So it comes out to about $36.60 per dollar that I spent on this ad when it came to this retargeting campaign. So now that, you know, my biggest ahas of all of this was a i had no idea what i was doing when it came to marketing like literally zero so coming out of this at any bit was going to make me a thousand times better you know just even figuring out how to navigate through facebook business manager which we all know we can pull our hair out how to you know target the audience you know just the whole process of putting an ad together and me farce dumping my way through trying to figure that out but for me my biggest ahas was be was that I shouldn't be so self-conscious about being the face of the business, that I am a huge asset to the business because my style and my storytelling and, and the story of me, which I learned through this course, really resonates with people. And, and therefore, there's a, I'm able to make more of a connection, you know, and, and it's, you know, it does help me so much more to find people who believe in what I believe in. And, and so this course, it really made me remember why I started Cutting Edge in the first place and how my personal journey 
is so important in, in how it's so intertwined with cutting edge and how it's really saved my life. And, and because I never even thought I'd be alive to, you know, to see 30 years old when I was going through that. And, and, you know, it gave me that fire, that hunger again. And that alone has literally made this course well worth it a million times over. Um, so what do we got to do next? We have to t conquer and take over the entire world. Um, if anybody ever saw Animaniacs, they know Pinky and the Brain every day. They'd be like, what are we going to do today? And he's like, the same thing we do every day, take over the world. Um, <laughs> so, you know, obviously we want to apply everything that we've learned. So, you know, um, now that we've become a preferred vendor through Food by Encompass, they're just now waiting for us to pull the trigger to let them know when we can staff at multiple venues across the country. You know, from, from the information that we got from uh, Goldman Sachs 10,000 businesses, just implementing that knowledge before COVID, we were already on our way from three to four and a half million in sales. And we were only in New York City and Atlanta, very, very little bits of touching base in Miami and LA, but not so much. And, you know, obviously now applying the the tools that we learned from BizHack, and now we can start attacking multiple cities. So next week, I'm actually going to Dallas. And, you know, Houston um, and Austin after that, for the week after that. So I'll be down there for two weeks networking. Yes, Texas is crazy right now. So I will be triple masking because there's a lot of insanity. But obviously, you know, I got to go, you know, work, work it out and do what I got to do. So our five-year plan is $100 million in sales per year. So we figure why not go big or go home when it comes to that. So we have a lot of work ahead of us that we have to figure out, Nathan and I. Um, in... That is it. Oh, my computer froze. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yes. we hear you great. We just don't see your video is all. Ah, okay. That's okay. So this is my thing. Where did the video stop? Just curious. About halfway through. Oh, okay. Lovely. <laughs> so that's okay. So we'll just say problem solution, funnel one, funnel two, my <laughs> that and now thank you thank you thank you guys i appreciate you for the time i know i went over a little bit um but my contact information is down there below if you're ever in need of a waiter bartender or you know an aesthetically pleasing person to work at a private event of yours we are here you know once uh we get through this good old pandemic thank you guys guys perfect, perfect. And, and we, we saw, we saw all of your, all of your all slides, slides. We'll we'll see your video, your video. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, Lucas, as, as your coach, you know, I, I, I saw you really getting out of your comfort zone, right? You, I remember at the beginning when uh, uh, you decided to do your first ad and that uh, will be a video of, of you speaking, you know, it was definitely you were pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And I am so glad you did. Um, it is so important in your business that you tell your story, right? And that's always the first thing, you know, Dan talks about and you, you your story uh, is, is heartbreaking, but inspiring at the same time. And you really got out of your comfort zone, did your video, you, learned uh, about the platform and became more and more comfortable with it. Um, and you did all that with such a positive attitude. I think, you know, if, if there's one thing that I'm going to get, you know, from uh, this uh, adventure in the last six weeks together is um, how positive you are. And now, especially knowing what you went through, right? Um, it is. It has been such a, a, a pleasure and honor to to work with someone so uh, positive and, and authentic and, and, and just a, a, a good person. So um, I am so proud of you. I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, all events resuming and uh, and uh, you guys, you know, getting uh, uh, more and more uh, business and, and uh, why not conquering the world? So congratulations, Lucas. And, and uh, the benefit of getting win-win with, uh, if, you could, if you could 
muted it's okay uh, i had the benefit of working with his partner nathan and nathan thank you for the uh leap of faith and bringing lucas into our world uh he was fabulous to work with and i so enjoyed working with you likewise thank you Danny. All right, so um, we uh, have our second Biz Hacker Award winner uh, as we kind of round the bend to the final uh, set of today's graduation celebration. Uh, so I'm excited to welcome Denise Kegler. Uh, Denise, I'll do a quick intro and then you're up. Denise Kegler is one of our most common types of business owners that come into the program, which are agency owners, uh, communications professionals, advertising professionals, marketing agency owners who recognize that there's an incredible opportunity for their business to use lead generation techniques and uh, this course, not only to help them attract new clients, but to increase the services that they provide their existing clients. We hear from communications professionals all over. We love what you do for us. You're an amazing communicator. You do great PR. We just want you to do more. Could you manage our social media? Could you run ads for us? And too many communications agencies say, I'm sorry, we don't do that. Or yes, we'll take that work. And then they just give all the money that they give to some white labeled uh, consultant who uh, they do it. This work guys for communications agencies is essential. To your success and so i salute denise for recognizing that this is the not the future but the present of managing and enhancing brands and adding these incredible skills to her already formidable toolbox i welcome denise kegler of mdk brand management biz hacker award winner great great thank you dan thank you guys okay so i can share my screen now my presentation up. Let's make it. Here we go. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate that introduction. Okay. So the story of me. So I grew up in Southeast Washington, D.C. with my single mother and my two sisters. And as a kid, I was so shy and so introverted. And as I grew older, I learned the importance of advocating for myself, having a voice in order for me to reach my goals. And for nearly 25 years, that's what I focused on. I built an incredible career in corporate, working for major multi-billion dollar corporations and really building my career. But along the way, I was meeting so many professionals and young people who were struggling, who were encountering difficulties, trying to build their careers and their businesses. And at that moment, I knew that I was meant to do more. So in 2015, I did decide to take the leap after holding senior level positions at multi-billion dollar companies, including, as you see here, Reebok and other large companies holding senior and executive level roles. But I decided to take the leap to focus on my passion. So I am Denise Kegler, the founder of MDK Brand Management, a firm that helps individuals and organizations stand out, step up, and break through. So when I worked on the campaign, I identified two problems. One was personal branding because so many careerists and professionals, business owners, don't really, one, know what personal branding is, don't have a defined personal brand, and don't really understand how that impacts their careers. The second problem I identified was that people don't also recognize the importance of storytelling. How do you take that personal brand? How do you wrap that in your story and then learn how to tell that story in a very compelling way? So the solution twofold. I decided to, and after working with my coach Ricardo, and I'll talk about Ricardo more in a second or in a couple um, minutes, 
to raise awareness of my book because I have a book, $40 and a brand, and the book is completely dedicated to helping individuals build a personal brand that can help them realize their professional goals. The second solution, the second part of my campaign was to talk about storytelling and to help people understand that they have a story to share. It's just a matter of crafting that story and sharing that story in very compelling ways. So my first Facebook ad was focused on video, view, video views as everyone else is. So I ran that ad for about 50 bucks and uh, got some good impressions, about 2,300 impressions. I reached about 1,800 and I had a good number, a decent number of through plays, about 1,700 at a cost of um, about um, three, three cents, um, three percent of the people who watched um watch the impressions or watch the through play. No, watch the video. So what's that? Three cents. Sorry. So three cents the cost. And um, so I did focus on quotes and testimonials, which was Ricardo's idea, which I'll talk about also in a second. My number two ad was focused on this, which was leads. That was my second ad. And I decided to focus on me as far as storytelling and focus on inviting people to a storytelling event that I was hosting on live on Zoom. What was interesting is, though I did have a decent number of impressions, about 500, I had zero through plays, but I did have 21 clicks and seven leads representing about 33% of the people who clicked. And as a bonus, I did get about 20 new Instagram followers, which was a cool, unexpected benefit. So putting the two side by side, um, you see here ad one versus ad two. I did focus completely on females. I mentioned I had solid through plays on the first ad, no through plays on the second ad, but a decent number of leads, seven. My five campaign ahas, that my book was low hanging fruit. And this was something Ricardo pointed out that I have this book. I wrote a book that is on Amazon and I should use that book to introduce my brand to people who I don't know and take the testimonials of people who wrote testimonials on the Amazon site, use that to draw attention to my brand. The first ad, which I did not do, should have included a link to my book website, not the free five minute audio version of the one of the chapters, which I did do. I should have also um, included in the second ad stat statistics and trends and facts, which I used in my first ad to introduce myself. I did not do it in my second ad at all. I just focused on or only focused on me. And I should have included um, a male as a second persona. I might have had more um, success, if you will, uh, at least at least being able to compare the two personas. So I should have probably done that. And I should have made my second ad shorter or as short as my first app because at 35 seconds it was probably too long. So what's next? Um, I'm glad that I could check off some of these. I am focused on creating and executing a social media content calendar. So thanks to BizHack, I have done that and I just didn't do that before. Um, I'm hosting more live virtual events thanks to BizHack. So in fact, I did one today and I do one every Wednesday on Instagram at 12 noon um, Eastern time. I go on Instagram and do workshop Wednesday, which is a free live session. I did do this. I created an e-coaching landing page for my website, which I did not have before. So thanks to Ricardo and BizHack. I am planning on running another Facebook ad promoting my each coaching programs. And I, I'm now focused on the importance of email marketing with my contacts, which I was not doing before. Thanks to BizHack, I now recognize the importance of doing that. So a big thank you to BizHack and the Digital Titans and an extremely big thank you to Ricardo as being my extraordinary coach. So thank you guys. Well, great job, uh, Denise. If, if I were to show you a, uh, a dashboard or a, um, an equalizer, if you may, you would see almost like a U shape in that, uh, that essential overview of Denise when she started and when she ended the, the program, she had this high level of frustration coming in and she had just, just indicate some of the things that she was uh, struggling with. And we managed to work together, bring those levels of frustration down. And then we went up with uh, excitement and enthusiasm and success. And, and so that's, pretty, that's a pretty amazing journey. And I feel like, uh, you know, regardless of who you think your friends or anyone who you know who owns a business, 
regardless of who you think they are, a program like BizHack could really get you from that levels of intimidation, fear, frustration, bring those down and take you up on a path, essentially like a cloud nine of fear, if you may, right? And that's amazing for the BizHack team. So congratulations, Denise. I think you did an, an amazing job. Keep doing what you're doing. You should actually, you know, engage Denise in buying her book. That's probably the quickest way to share support. Uh, I did purchase a copy, by the way, but good job. And, uh, and thank you again. And keep rocking because the, the most important thing is a wheel that's not turning is a wheel that is stuck. So never forget to keep your wheels turning, no matter how slow, as long as it's turning, I promise you the distance between where you start and where you're headed is going to show up. Thank you. Thanks, Ricardo. All right. So what an amazing group of presentations. And thank you guys so much for your dedication and, uh, you know, your, your perseverance. Honestly, half a dozen others of you could easily have presented today. It was such a strong group. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we've never had uh, a completion rate this high among a group. So you have so much to be proud of. You're one of the most serious minded uh the you came in with more pr preparation than most uh we had uh more than half of you were b2b which is a first in biz hacks history this was a really unique group uh, a lot of 10k sbers go goldman sachs um and uh i want to um now share with you guys uh, a really important and exciting announcement so um i have decided uh I've been quietly working behind the scenes for the last year uh, to upgrade and renovate the course. A lot of you guys saw elements of that in the Pinecrest training that you participated in. The very concept of the BizHack lead building system, uh, we only named that actually uh, last winter uh, in, in December. Uh, that's where we came, uh, uh, November, where we came up with the name, the lead building system. So we have been working uh, diligently behind the scenes to completely update, upgrade, and renovate what I think was already a really strong curriculum. And so as a result, uh, I am going to be returning uh, as the lead instructor for our next, uh, our next cohort, uh, cohort uh, 18, which starts on April 5th. And I wanted to extend uh, as uh, a free opportunity for you guys to come as my guest to any one of those sessions, any one of those 10 classes. You guys are invited to come and join me. Uh, and if there's anything you want to get a refresh on, just tell us which class you're coming and Marianne will send you the info. You're welcome to it. We're also going to be offering to all alumni an opportunity to retake the class uh, at a massively discounted rate, so stand, stand by for that. But there's more than just announcing myself as the co-lead instructor. I want to introduce my fellow lead instructor, the amazing Alex Oliveira. Alex, are you there? I'm here. Awesome. Hi, guys. Hi Alex. Welcome. Hi, welcome. Is... Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, and I'm honored to be here. So exciting, lots of energy, um, really inspiring to hear about everyone's business and what you guys are doing at BizHack. So I'm really excited to be a part of the team. You know, Alex Oliveira is just a breathtaking talent, guys. So he is the founder and CEO of Predic. Uh, is that how you pronounce it? You got it. Uh, a marketing agency. It specializes in lead generation for small to mid-sized businesses. So his specific agency expertise, what he's been doing now for well on a decade is specifically what this course focuses on and why we recruited him. He's worked with many, many small and mid-sized companies, but he's also worked with Ford and AutoNation. So uh, we're bringing kind of the, uh, the best practices from the big guys and then sharing it with the rest of us. Um, he has also been a digital marketing instructor for some of the top educational institutions around town and is dedicated uh, as really kind of a, a second career to being an educator. He's taught at the Jim Moran Institute at FAU, Broward College, Lynn University, the National Le Leadership Institute, and more. 
He also has something that we always look for in our instructors, which is a long track record of volunteerism. We are looking to change lives and we want people who want to change their lives in everything that they do. He's been a board member of the YMCA of South Palm Beach County. He's been a member of the uh, a board member of the Greater Boca uh, Raton Chamber of Commerce. And he it was one of the board members of the South Florida Interactive Marketing Association. Alex is uh, also Brazilian. So we're having another Brazilian named Alex. Uh, but he is Brazilian born, South Florida raised, and he is, I'm sorry to let you all know, married with four beautiful children. I'm sorry to let the, I'm sorry to let them know that Alex, because you're not bad on the eyes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to embarrass you. You know, um, I am so overjoyed. Uh, let me ask you, you got a chance to now see where we ended, where we ended the semester uh, and now you're going to see how the sausage is made and where these folks begin. Uh, what what did you what were some of your impressions or takeaways watching uh, these presentations today? Yeah, um, absolutely. I, I think the biggest takeaway for me from from standpoint of like what did BizHack do for these business owners is the fact that they understand how to tell their story. OK, and I would say that the first like five years of my lead gen sort of experience was not based on on brand, you know, or storytelling was just simply drive traffic to websites. And it really wasn't until about five years ago that we started to work with clients to tell the story. So you and I have that in common. And I can clearly see that these businesses understand the owners understand that they have to tell a story and be able to position themselves in the marketplace or the leads are not going to be as strong. So that's what I heard. But I also heard excitement, the connection between the businesses as well as the coaches. And I can hear that the coaches have this, you know, they're, they're very invested into the success. And I think that that's a great recipe for success, having the coaches. It's very unique. Um, it, it's, it is our secret. It is our secret sauce is that we recognize that if we give you a solid framework, right, the foundation, the six pillars, the nine steps, and then we help you implement it through the help of, uh, of a uh, group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching, and then support you through the stress and trauma of learning hard things with a robust and loving and supportive community, it, it creates transformational results. And you know, BizHack as a business, guys, is really, we're growing a lot. We've added two new team members. Uh, Marianne is now uh, a part of the team. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's so great to have you. You guys all benefited from her loving attention and uh, follow through. Uh, we also have Stephanie Miller, who's on the call, uh, who is heading up our operations. And then, of course, Lilia Posos. So, uh, when we started this semester, we had two people on the team. Now we're up to four, and we're going growing from there. And a big part, honestly, of what we're looking to do with you is to go from kind of a transactional relationship where you take a course and graduate into one where it's much more of a long-lasting relationship where we continue to be there for you now and into the future. And so... We have a lot that we're looking to introduce. Um, you know, the first way to do that is to join us uh, next semester uh, for any class you want. Um, we're going to talk to you about opportunities for additional coaching that some of you have already taken advantage of. But really, you are the future of BizHack, and we want to stay in touch, and we want to keep this amazing feeling that we've generated over the transom through Zoom in a couple weeks, and we want to keep that going and keep supporting you and supporting your businesses and supporting your growth, supporting your careers and supporting your learning journeys. So um, we rely on you uh, to help us uh, bring the right types of folks to the class. Thank you so much for your referrals. We offer scholarships to folks who are uh, minority and women-owned businesses. We've given out more than $100,000 in those scholarships. Um, they, you can send people to apply.bizhack.com slash scholarship. Um, 
the average over the last year and a half of uh, uh, biz hackers is 29 to one. I know that those results that I shared with you today were partial. They didn't include Zanat's sale that happened right before today's call. Uh, a lot of you please do fill out uh, the feedback survey because that's how we get that data. Um, we've given out more than 90,000, actually it's now more than 100,000. Many of you are beneficiaries of those scholarships. It's why we have Dan, can't hear you, Dan. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. I'm back. Um, you know, d d diversity and inclusion is about so much more than just paying lip service. It's about action. And we take action by putting our money where our mouth is to attract women and minorities to this course. We want to be a safe place for you to learn stuff that is often excluded uh, uh, you know, many of the marketing out there is digital marketing bros, largely white men. And we stand uh, in contrast to that. I get I'm a white man. I'm also um, from Spain and, uh, you know, self-identify as Hispanic. But look at the incredible diversity in our team. Look at the incredible diversity in our coaches. You know, we are proud to be minority serving, women serving, small business serving. And uh, we are looking to help the underdog and you know underdogs in your life who could use our help. We have only 10 seats left in the next cohort. We've had an extraordinary pre-sale process. And so I'd love those to be your people, your supporters. Uh, I'm having an info session tomorrow. Uh, it's at 2.30 p.m. Um, I welcome you guys to send people to it. We'll have another one next week. Um, and then we have an amazing entry point for anybody who's really interested. Next week uh, is a BizHack Live on Clubhouse. And then Alex, you're going to be up again. Uh, Alex Oliveira is up on a lead generation for small businesses the week following. So uh, I'm really uh, thrilled and excited to have you um, a part of the program. And uh, we're going to do our final thank you gifts raffle. As a quick reminder, the idea behind the raffle is to give thank you gifts to the friends and family that made it possible for us to take this course. So that's kind of the idea. I know some of you were saying, hey, we should give the thank you gifts to one another. Uh, it's definitely a good um, suggestion that we'll consider. But what we really wanted to do is, Denise, was that your, your sister, your mother? Who, who was on the, who's on the line with us? My daughter, Danielle, who lives in Your Austin. daughter. Son is the one who won Jacqueline's uh, gift. Joey. I love it. So Jack, Jackie's dad, Denise's daughter, you know, we, we, we know we took you away from your family. We know we took you and we want to thank them for supporting you through this journey. So uh, we have a free neuro empowerment assessment uh, from Pathwaves and the winner is? Latasha Bradley. Congratulations, Latasha. Another $50 gift card from Audrey and the winner is? Kevin Clark. And finally, a waiter to work your private event for five hours. And the winner is Dan Gretsch. <laughs> Kobe Lee. Congratulations, Kobe. Uh, and now um, I want to give you guys a musical surprise. So I don't know how many of you knew this, but our amazing coach, Ricardo Barris, is also a recording artist. You can find him on iTunes. He's, he goes by the name Ricky Anthony. And he has arranged uh, and, and sing, sing, sung a unique original song specifically dedicated to biz hackers and our graduates, uh, arranged by Ricky Anthony and Nick D, and available on YouTunes. Journey, there were many things you didn't know. How it's because of your openness to learn. Look what you've earned. 
Yeah. And as you go, go, letting the seas are all the lessons learned to reap what you sow. Now be afraid to tell and share to everyone you know with complete openness to learn. They too can learn. We lift our hats off to you and you. And you for doing all the things you needed to do. It's not good enough for all you fall through and through. So proud of you. Hats off to you. Thank you, Ricardo. Hey, Ricardo. Woohoo! And thanks to all of you. Uh, Alex, I cannot wait for the next chapter of our adventure together. I'm so glad that we're bringing back the full marketing team. And thank you guys for your, your dedication, your hard work, for believing in us, and for letting us be a part of your lives and letting us transform your lives. We'll see you soon. Stay in touch, okay? And we'll be in touch.